12 new entrants on Michelin's Bip Gourmand, which is back after a year and features eateries that offer food at no more than $45. 69 places in this year's list, but the new guys comprise these nine hawker stalls and three restaurants. Yakitori restaurant Shirokane Toritama at Robertson Walk, though, who was in the 2019 lineup, is not on the list. But six of the hawker stalls in the list are in Jurong, so who better to tell? Tell us more than Eunice Quick. Not only is she food correspondent for the Straits Times, but she lives in Jurong as well and is familiar with some of these stalls. So welcome back to the show, Eunice. Out of the six uh, Bib Goma uh, entrants in Jurong, what are your top picks? Well, I have to say that my top picks would be Soki cooked food and as well as this um, Juicia uh, Bakote, which I just had last week. As good as ever, they do like Teochew style peppery Bakote with sides of like, you know, your braised peanut, your yu tiao, your tauki, all the works that make up a really good Bakote. For Soki, I actually grew up eating it, so I will admit that I have a very soft spot for it. Um, the brothers actually who are behind it, very media shy, uh, but they have been dishing out um, delicious porridge and like tender steamed uh, white chicken for more than 30 years. Very, very simple looking food, may not look the most exciting or Instagrammable, but it's really, really tasty and there are always long queues um, for the food. Uh, I don't go very often, honestly, to the Yuhua Village um, Hawker Centre. Um, but the two stalls that are there, that are on the list, are very popular. One of them, which is um, this uh, Fei Fei Roasted Noodle, they were actually sold out by the time we went down um, to speak to them. And um, their Cha Siu, in particular, is the one to look out for. Um, really tender, juicy, the really nice roast on it. Well, thanks, Eunice. That was food correspondent Eunice Quek, and you can read her story on the Bib Goman list over at StraitsTimes.com. Moving on, an art exhibition at the National Gallery by British sculptor Sir Anthony Gormley. Well, he's internationally renowned for his sculptures, installations, and public artworks that explore the relationship between the human body and space. And here to share more is senior culture correspondent Ong Sofen. So, hi, Sofen. Uh, you wrote that his new works were born during a COVID-19, so what can we expect to see at the National Gallery? Well, the big attraction is the new commission that they did for the rooftop, and it's like a work of contemporary art. For Anthony Gormley, it's very interactive because the sculptor himself says that it's only complete when people come and interact with the work. So basically, it's just these aluminium um, uh, tubes and you can walk through it and you see like the landscape around you through these tubes. They form like a series of arches and if there is wind they kind of move slightly so it's kind of interactive it's kind of like walking through a little postmodern sculptural maze and it's quite fun to see. Well, thanks very much, Sofa. You can visit Sir Anthony Gormley's exhibition now at the National Gallery. You actually have uh, quite a bit of time for repeat visits because it's on until October the 30th next year. And admission is free for Singaporeans and PRs. But if you're not in the mood to leave the house, well, journalist Jan Lee has a Chinese drama series to recommend, Remembrance of Things Past. Well, it's a refreshing, down-to-earth and sometimes brutal, right? Look at the lives of auto working adults in Beijing. So Jan, why is this one so binge-worthy? Is it because uh, you relate to it in some way? Yes, um, I wrecked it in my binge-worthy column. That's why it's binge-worthy. But um, yes, in some ways, it's definitely a series that I think will speak to a lot of young people. You know, to give you a brief overview of the story, it's basically a group of women living and working in Beijing and it's about their lives. They're all good friends, lah, you know, or they're, they're very close and they support each other. So on the surface, it sounds like, oh, maybe it's just another sex and the city type, you know, or four women taking on the big city kind of thing. But it's really not because, you know, I'm, I'm quite used to see drama sometimes being a bit exaggerated, sometimes being very, very glossy. But this one is very down to earth. And this one has like scenes of the, the leads taking very, very packed MRT trains to work. 
then having to stay over time, you know, having to scrimp and save at the end of the month and so on. So it really shows you the sort of like um, very day in day out of of uh, living and working in a big city, which can be very taxing and very exhausting. Especially given that these girls they are not from Beijing, so they all have to like rent and you know pay their utilities bills and uh, you know take care of their own food and all, all that things. So it's quite um, interesting in that way, and there is a very, very, very shocking event and very tragic event that happens in the first episode, and that kind of kickstarts the entire story. And as you after the first episode, and as you watch the following episodes, you'll realize, oh, that's why it's called Remembrance of Things Past, because it sort of threads um past and present together and shows you the the history between these women. And um, you know the the lives that they have led together, and yeah, I think it's quite a refreshing drama. It's only twelve episodes, and a bit of an anomaly for C dramas. Each episode is about seventy minutes. is available on Mango TV channel on YouTube. Well, thanks very much, Jen. I am looking for a new show to watch, and you can find this one on the Mango TV drama channel on YouTube.